I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the Darawal speaking people who are the traditional custodians of the land on which I stand, live and work. I pay my respects to the elders past, present and future and value their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. Hi, my name's Dr. Leanne Hepburn and I'm a design researcher and senior lecturer in design at the University of Sydney in Australia. Now today I'd like to talk to you about an area of design and of design education I'm particularly interested in. Exploring participatory learning beyond the institution. So why is this of interest to me? Well, as a designer working across research and teaching, I'm particularly interested in the way that design can cross boundaries. It can unpick complexity and it can engage diverse communities in accessible, inclusive and creative ways. So my own research sits within a participatory design context, a practice that is inherently socially engaged, emancipatory and seeks to use design in a democratic way. A practice that seeks to acknowledge, understand and respond to the pluralistic lived experiences that shape our world. Within design education, I think these qualities are inherently built into the studio model. For me, the design studio and participatory design enable a space for creative exploration, a learning experience that is experimental and experiential. Learning in this context moves from traditional teacher-centric models towards ones that are more self-directed, where students have autonomy to explore, to interpret, to critically reflect, and most importantly, to challenge current thinking in a way that enables them to make sense of their own experiences in the world. Now today, as we're distanced and distributed in response to COVID-19, I think students have even more autonomy to really push the boundaries of what knowledge is within the institution. So for me, design education is well placed to explore the complex challenges facing the world today. Now one of the most important ways that design has done this is through external engagement. Now in my experience, that external engagement has involved community and industry partners and has ranged from light touch participation, for example, guest lecturers coming in to do visits or panels, right through to a larger investment of time in the development of joint research projects or live briefs. However, in these socially constructed models of learning, I soon began to feel uneasy about the way in which academia was engaging. External engagement in academia has traditionally been based within Western neoliberal ideologies. As a result, practices are not democratic, nor are they decolonized. And the pedagogical value of engaging industry and community has been framed from a student perspective, providing them with real world experiences. Similarly, metrics and measures for such engagement have focused on quantitative impact. So KPIs, for example, the number of organizations engaged. But I feel there's a real need to better understand the experiences of participation engagement with the people that we actually involve in this to be aware of the ethics and equity, and to consider notions of value. How can we co-design new models of collaboration that extend notions of knowing and enable decolonised participatory learning beyond the institution? So to begin to explore this further, to better understand the experiences of people involved and to consider notions of learning, I undertook 23 qualitative interviews. People were engaged across a series of master's level design projects and they represented industry and community. Their collaboration was voluntary, and some partnerships were initiated by the institution, whilst others were established directly by students. So I'd like to share a brief overview of the findings here and discuss how they might inform better engagement practices moving forward and better learning experiences for the people involved. One theme emerging was of socially engaged publics and the learning that was enabled through the creation of these communities. Now, the development of bonds between place-based participants and the collaborative act of engaging in design projects was seen to have equal to or often more value than the tangible output created by students, for example, a service or an artefact designed. The live project, in this instance, offered a framework for facilitating and enabling a sense of collective identity and integration. However, questions remain about the sustainability of such publics, whether they have the momentum or drive to continue beyond the end of a project, and of the role and responsibilities of the institution in maintaining them on the longer term. So for this participant, the design brief facilitated a space for learning, 
an informal opportunity to share and explore new ideas and perspectives, a space that's different to their usual type of engagement. The second theme emerging in the research was of participatory provocation. Here, participants discussed the opportunities offered by live design projects to challenge and provoke assumptions and norms, to raise awareness of what's important to them and to encourage critical conversations with students. And in this instance, learning was related to impact. Many participants referred to students as future thinkers or future leaders and discussed a sense of social responsibility for educating them on real world perspectives. However, there was a flip side to this. Participants also discussed feeling like a free resource, and some even talked about being used by the rich institution. There appeared to be a fine line between engagement and what was described by one participant as invasion. This highlighted the need for appropriate models of engagement, careful consideration of expectations, and the articulation of learning as a possible outcome. The third theme emerging was reciprocal practice. From an institutional perspective, external engagement is often seen as a way to keep academia relevant, typically demonstrated through outreach and widening participation activities. However, participants also discussed the notion of relevance. In this case, engagement in live design projects was seen as a way to stay up to date with current thinking, with new or popular approaches, for example, design thinking for business. And it was a way to learn about new technologies, such as augmented reality or virtual reality. Industry partners in particular perceived the association with the institution as being of value, discussing the potential for using it as leverage to gain competitive edge. Now, this was less important to community sector partners, and they valued learning that could improve their own internal processes and support sustainability. Similarly, there appeared to be a shift towards a more equitable partnership, particularly among partners who were engaged on more than one occasion. Here, participants discussed highlighting areas or issues they wanted to explore further, identifying their own learning needs and negotiating these into the live design brief. The final theme emerging was redesigning reflection. Now, this was about supporting the emergence and vocalising of new perspectives and the active learning that was enabled by exposure to diverse lived experiences. Participants talked about the activities that supported reflection, that enabled them to have a space to think beyond the confines of their own institution. They talked of empathy and humility, and realigning with a sense of collective responsibility. Now this included the potential to disrupt the dynamics of social and political contexts through the application of new knowledge, the ability to challenge mainstream thinking within the academia, so to come into the institution and to create diverse discussions. And also how design practices could inform dialogue on speculative futures. Despite a sense of positivity, there were also underlying challenges related to control and autonomy and the ability of the institution to steer and shape the direction of a collaboration. So participants were open to new models of engagement that distributed control, recognising that as an opportunity for deeper learning. My paper proposes a model for participatory learning that draws on the experiences gathered and adopts the emerging themes as underlying principles. And it's envisioned that the model can both consider how design education engages with external people and why. It aims to provoke and stimulate socially and critically engaged practice to encourage both the institution and external people to consider their underlying assumptions about that collaboration and what potential value might be. Particularly, it attempts to rebalance the underlying notions of positionality around power and equity. The next steps for the research are to test it in new contexts and to articulate participatory learning beyond the institution as a critical part of enabling collective thinking towards preferable pluralistic futures. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my presentation. I hope the model can offer a lens through which to consider how we engage with people beyond the institution. And importantly, to reimagine equitable experiences of participatory learning, particularly across design.